Hello and thanks for joining us on this special edition of the Newsfeed. I'm your host, Samantha Eastman. Today we will be discussing the legalization of, both, of marijuana, both the pros and cons, with our guest Professor of Sociology, Biko Agazino, and Lauren McHugh from Young Americans for Freedom. Professor Agazino supports the legalization, while Lauren is against legalization. We would like to start off with each of you telling us a little bit about yourselves. Professor? Uh, yes, thank you, Samantha, for inviting me to your program. Of course. I am a professor of sociology and Africana studies in the Department of Sociology. Great. I have researched on the policy implications in my first book, Black Women and the Criminal Justice System and also in my subsequent book, Counter Colonial Criminology. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Well, thank you so much. And Lauren, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about yourself. Hi, thanks for inviting me. My name is Lauren McHugh. I am a junior political science major here, and I am also the chairman of Young Americans for Freedom. It's a conservative, nonpartisan activism group, and we, act, um, we are for the limited government, free enterprise, traditional family values, and strong national defense. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Marijuana recently became legal in the states of Colorado and Washington for recreational use. This took effect in January 1st this year in Colorado and July 7th for Washington. State tax revenues for Colorado have amounted to $202 million in the first four months. Projected revenue for Washington is expected to be around $220 million as well. Simple possession arrest rates are down since legalization in Colorado. However, they continue for certain amounts. Professor Biko, what are the reasonings behind legalization, both legally and economically? Legally, the law is made for the people. The people are not made for the law. And when we, the people, say that we want to change the law, we will change the law. So long as the changes we are bringing about with our votes do not harm our fellow citizens. Secondly, and economically, it is very expensive to execute the laws against marijuana prohibition. Virginia alone spends nearly $70 million a year prosecuting a drug that is less harmful than alcohol and much less harmful than tobacco, which are legal, but also from the legal angle, incarcerating about or arresting about 800,000 Americans every year for marijuana is leading to what President Obama called the erosion of confidence in law enforcement because of the tensions between communities and law enforcement. And thirdly, marijuana legalization is a humane act for those patients who use marijuana recommended by their physicians and who cannot access such medication here in Virginia because of the law. And as a result, we have seen Virginia families uprooted and gone to Colorado as marijuana refugees because they got a little child with epilepsy and the doctors tell them that they can't help the child, they just have to watch the child die. But in Colorado, they could access the marijuana oil that would make the child get better quickly. Why can't that be also here in Virginia? And finally, the law in Virginia regarding marijuana in 1619 actually required that every Virginian farmer should grow uh, some kind of marijuana crop. It was required. If you did not grow it, you would go to jail. So the debate is not about legalization of marijuana, but re-legalization, because once upon a time, it was legal. I see what you're saying, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but Lauren, what, on the other hand, what are some reasons against legalizing marijuana? Okay, so as young people, I assume a lot of the audiences, we're at a college, we don't want the government to run our lives, and the legalization of marijuana 
While at first glance it seems like, oh, it's taking away a regulation, the size of government will have to increase because then we'll have to regulate it. Should people have, be able to smoke marijuana when they drive? How about teachers who are around young kids? Should they be allowed to be high? Should we be able to do that in the workplace? So there will be an increasing number of regulations. And also, an issue like this should also be left to the states. So on the national level, it should not be legalized, and it actually contradicts certain Supreme Court cases that have gone through. And marijuana is also a gateway drug. While it is not the most harmful one out there, once you start engaging in something like that, it opens the doors to many other pathways. And the legalization of marijuana would almost take the fear out of it of people, people being scared that they're gonna, going to get caught. And so that would increase the usage. And when you increase the usage of marijuana, that increases more people in society that are dependent on it. And I don't think that it's good for a country to have uh, people who are dependent on a substance and substance abuse. The legalization of marijuana will not make it not as harmful to people and to society. I mean, you interview students, and I've talked to students, and they u they're, they're users of it, but they say it makes them lazy, and they're fine just sitting in bed watching Netflix all day and e binge eating food that's bad for them, and they just don't care. And if we increase the use of that, that, that kind of puts America in danger. Okay, can you think of a situation that will compromise people who want to legalize marijuana and those who don't? Does that make sense? Yes. Whichever would like to go first. Lauren, if you'd like to start. Um, so right now, people use marijuana, and it's not as dangerous as if we would legalize it because when people use it in the private use of their home, the police can't just bust into their home without probable cause. The Constitution protects you against that. They need a search warrant because it protects you against unreasonable search and seizure. So I think by keeping it illegal, people will be a lot more cautious when using it. So while you can't stop what people do in their private lives because you see cocaine, that's illegal and people still use it, the amount of people who use it and are causing harm on society is a lot less when it is not legalized. Professor? Yes, I see a compromise between Lorna and myself in the sense that young Americans for freedom should be for more freedom rather than the restriction of the freedom of fellow Americans, especially poor minority Americans who are otherwise law abiding. But if we look beyond ideological differences, you can see that law enforcement officers are for legalization because the prohibition of marijuana is making law enforcement officers unpopular in the community. So there is an association called Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, LEAP. They are saying that their jobs will be easier for them if Congress will remove this unnecessary burden on law enforcement officers so they can concentrate their scarce resources on going after the real criminals not after old ladies who are using marijuana for arthritis pain, or young people who are using it recreationally, knowing that marijuana is 1,000 times safer than alcohol, and that about 600,000 Americans are killed every year from tobacco abuse or to tobacco use. Yet we know that no American, no human being, has ever died from using marijuana. In terms of compromise, you find that on both sides of the aisle in Congress, there are advocates for legalization. Ron Paul and Rand Paul on the other side, on the side of the conservatives, and lots of Democrats who have been introducing bipartisan legislation to free up American citizens, give them their freedom. And then we can use education to address any harms that marijuana could do to young people. The same way we use education to get young people to say no to tobacco or to binge drinking. We can use education because that is the only thing that works effectively, not prohibition. Let's pause for a moment and pick up our discussion after this short break. Please stay with us.
Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to this special edition of the Newsfeed. I'm Samantha Eastman. Today we are discussing the legalization of marijuana, both the pros and cons, with our guest, Professor of Sociology, Biko Agazino, and Laura McHugh from the Young Americans for Freedom. Okay. Okay, so then my next question is, do you believe marijuana legalization will happen in Virginia in the next 10 years? Well, while I cannot predict the future, it's really up to the people of Virginia and no legislation has been passed so far and marijuana has been around for, for decades, for many, many hundreds of years. So it's really up to the people and it could, be, it could contradict some things that have been ruled at the Supreme Court level and I believe that, you know, you grow up and you go to elementary school and even in first grade they tell you don't do drugs, don't do alcohol, and don't smoke tobacco. So why would the people of Virginia want to vote to just legalize something else that we work so hard and spend, spend so many, much efforts and money to control and tell people not to do? So why would the people of this great state want to open the doors to more activity. And also, it's shown, yes, people, there is some revenue by taxing marijuana, but a lot of the revenue that is created goes to programs to control the negative effects of the legalization. So I believe that the people in Virginia will be smart enough to make sure that it is not legalized. Professor. Thank you. Time. I hope the people of Virginia would now wait 10 years to remove something that is eroding the civil rights of minorities at a very alarming rate. Even here in Montgomery County, why are they arresting young black people disproportionately for marijuana possession and across Virginia? Why are we spending 60 to $70 million of our taxpayers' money on policing something that is less harmful than tobacco? Maybe one reason why it would be difficult to legalize marijuana in Virginia is because Virginia is tobacco country. And big tobacco is against legalization of a substance that will compete against tobacco being much safer than tobacco. A lot of young people will prefer to use marijuana than use tobacco, and quite rightly so. But we can use some of the money we're going to be saving from not prosecuting this uh, unnecessary law to educate young people, as Lorna said, do not use drugs because you are better off using your money and your time to do other things. But if you're looking for things to make illegal because they are dangerous, how about high fructose corn syrup that is actually eroding the IQ of Americans, especially poor Americans? Marijuana is not completely safe. There is no such thing as a safe drug. But scientists have told us that marijuana is the safest drug known to humanity. And we should leave it to the choice of law-abiding law adults what they prefer to eat in the comfort of their own homes, what they prefer to consume in the comfort of their own homes. This is the land of the free, home of the brave. Come on, Virginians. We, the people, can change the law and make it more humane for our fellow citizens, even though we are not all users of marijuana, even though we are not all smokers of tobacco or users of alcohol, I would hate to see a, a Virginia kid, minority or majority, going to jail for smoking tobacco because tobacco is bad for that kid. I would feel the same way about marijuana. Don't use it against our citizens thinking that it is mainly poor minority youth that are being affected. When you pause to look at it, minorities might be more likely to be arrested, but a lot of poor white youth are also being railroaded into a criminal career that would deny them loans to go to college, that would deny them opportunities to get jobs, that would deny them chances to get public housing or any help because they have 
been found with marijuana residues in their urine. When we know from science, from medical research, that marijuana is not only safer than tobacco and alcohol, but it's also medicinal. Well, thank you both so much. It looks like that's all the time we'll have for this discussion. We'd like to thank our two guests, Professor Agazzino and Ms. Lauren McHugh. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Remember that you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, as well as our website, thenewsfeednrv.wordpress.com. I'm Samantha Eastman, and thanks for watching. <laughs>